to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It was football time. <laughs> yes, it was, <laughs> baby. What a game we got. That's how you Thursday night football. Is the preseason over, guys? Maybe. I oh, mean, is we, that what you're going to take it as? That's what I'm taking it as. We saw this on Monday night, right, with the with the Seahawks and the Lions. Some scoring was a little bit up. Now going into week five, you know, you have a month of preseason. In the sense that we the NFL skips preseason, they're ready. They're ready to play ball. 36 to 30. Oh, we had some lasers out there. We did. We had uh, we had the full, in effect, laser make, we Mayfield. Had, who who was the number one quarterback going into the night and put up another 30-plus point night? He, he's been for fantasy. I, I, don't, I don't think people realize how good he's been because most people haven't been just playing. You know, they didn't draft him to play him. Maybe they streamed him for a matchup or, or, and are, are thrilled. But he's been fantastic. And what's crazy is, like, <laughs> you don't think about him as a dual-threat quarterback. But he's got a game with 21 rushing yards, yeah. 34 rushing yards, 42. Does a little boot scoot and boogie from time to time. I picked up Baker Mayfield in our Dynasty League a couple years ago just to have a backup. You need a backup. I forgot <laughs> that he was an option for this. I, I genuinely, like I have Kyler Murray in that league. I forgot Baker's an option. Like, if Kyler has another stinker, I've got a decision on my hands, boys. Yeah, you do. But last night was outrageous. I mean, Kirk Cousins broke the all-time record for Falcons passers. What? 509 passing yards, 60 dropbacks, 58 passing attempts. This, this was Oprah screaming, you get a car, you get a car. For <laughs> almost awesome. for most people, everybody, we, we had lasers and we had phasers from Captain Kirk. No, oh, okay, I like. Right. It. Come on, that's no, good. No, no that's, that's a good switch. It's great. It's great. Thank you. Thank. I just I felt like you were trying to get it in real quick. I because I was you trying. Should've, you should have waited a minute and then brought it in. But it's great. I was trying to get it earlier. We had to, we got to get the jokes. I'm in sorry, when we can. I did. If you had told me you had that ready, I didn't have it ready. It okay. just it just came. Yeah, to the the, time, the timing might have been better, but I still appreciate. I mean, it rhymes. Yeah, it goes with nicknames. Yeah, this is great. No, we don't. Yeah, we're done with it. No, though. No. Okay, you know what I mean. You the sure? lasers and phasers. <laughs> we're not done, bro. <laughs> Sixteen <laughs> targets for Darnell Mooney. Nine oh, for one hundred five and two. Hope you played him over Tyreek. Thirteen targets for Drake London. Twelve for one fifty four and one. Wait, one almost Who? concussion. But Drake London. For, nope, that's oh. not Drake London, baby. That's CD Lamb Part Two. <laughs> the curse has been reversed. Oh, get ready for it because Drake London is going to be. I'm telling you, you guys. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for you are welcome. reversing the curse of my dynasty trade of Waddle for Lamb, and I have undone it, and I have turned him back into CD Lamb in the new form of Drake London, who is an alpha. Oh, I'm so happy. Well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say fifty-eight passing attempts, five hundred <laughs> yards is prescriptive. And the fact that you scored thirty-six points, put up those numbers, and we got nothing great out of Bijan Robinson is one of the storylines of the night. Because, I mean, I, I think I saw his rushing chart just before the show started. I don't know if you guys looked that up. I have not. I don't know if there was a between the tackles run. Oh, it's yeah, all I think outside. it was like uh, like all t eleven of his twelve runs were like over the left side, like out wide. Like it, I it would, was. I would say that's dumb, but he was successful. I mean, he ran for five point one a carry, so it's not like their scheme was not working. It's just he's not getting the utilization that you wanted. Like week one, twenty three opportunities. We were like, okay, he's the dude. He was out there for ninety percent of snaps. It's not that way. Like Algier is very involved. He's playing 65-ish percent of snaps the last couple of games, touching the ball 15, 18 times. That's a fine baseline. Like, he's been okay. He's not been a bust by any means. Seven attempts last week, 12 this week. Uh, the passing game work is fine, not great. One touchdown in five games. And 
I think the story with Bijan was that you would get yourself your Atlanta Kyron. You know, right, your, your yeah. Atlanta McCaffrey. You wanted him to be the focal point. And I think if last night pointed anything out, like Bijan's fine as a low end RB1. Yeah. But he is not what makes this team go. And then in a game where they needed to go, it was Kirk, it was London, it was Mooney, it was even Kyle Pitts. I mean, Kyle Pitts had eight targets in this game. I looked it up. This is like. Kyle, it's it's funny because Kyle Pitts has very few double digit games in his entire career. Last night, I think he was twelve point four points in our league of record scoring, which is half point. But this was like his sixth greatest game of all time. But like most of them are the exact same twelve points. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it was nice to see. I mean, he got targeted. I mean, Ray Ray McLeod had nine targets in this game. Yeah, they they definitely turned the phasers to murder and said. <laughs> Uh, Kirk, go go win this game. He was amazing. Um, there you you can't really speak enough. We talked about like, hey, we haven't seen much from Kirk yet this season from a fantasy perspective. Being able to start or stream him, he was it, bottling it up. It was nice to see. I will say, going back to Bijan, I had a thought. This was I don't know first second quarter, a thought that made me so sad because I've got Bijan in a handful of leagues. Um, and I really don't want it to be true. But I was like, did you think? Is Bijan the Garrett Wilson of running backs? Where it's uh, like so, he's good. He's a good player. But we're waiting for this superstar, and eventually you got to stop making excuses. Like, break one off, buddy. Well, let, go th for 40. This this is what I was gonna say is like you said it's working. It's not working. It wasn't working. Like that you you can appropriate the 12 carries, but he had a 28 yard run in the game, which means you had eleven carries for three point three. So whatever the system was doing, like I think we'd all if I bring up Rashad White's name and the fact he went 10 for 72, are you guys going to tell me Rashad White You're had the game right of his him. life? No, no because no, no. he had the big... Because he had a 56-yard run. So I think something in the in the like process right now is just different. Like I, And maybe it changes, you know? Like, we didn't get Drake London for four weeks. Really? I mean, we got... I guess, we, I guess he was okay. <laughs> but this was, this was like... They got it going, and Bijan wasn't enough of a focal point, especially in the passing game where you would have imagined you'd get more than four targets in a game like this. I mean, Algier had the same amount of targets as Bijan. Disgusting. It's I mean, So calling him the Garrett Wilson of the running back position, a little scary to say that. The, yeah, he the needs curse, one more year to be officially that. The curse of draft capital can haunt some players. Cause it, look, when the Falcons took Bijan where they took him, it was weird, right? Like – Based on the trends of what had been going on with the NFL draft, it was like, holy crap, you just spent way up. I mean, and he gets to be side by side with, you know, like Jameer Gibbs, who, J Jameer, Jameer Gibbs, like in Dynasty, I think we had just talked about this, but it's like, is would you rather have Gibbs over Bijan? And we could be moving that way rapidly. But also, you know, we, Arthur Smith was the fantasy football villain for years. Partly, you know, for other players, but then, then partly because of Bijan. He leaves. The new coaching staff is like, no, we're still going to split the carries and we're going to split snaps here with uh, with Tyler Algier because Algier is good. They, yep. Like, this, is, this isn't a, we're getting a, we're forcing a, a backup level player out there. You're putting the player who had the, the, does he still have the rookie record, Kyle? He had over a thousand in his rookie. Like right? the, I think he has still has the the rookie record for for rushing yards for the Atlanta Falcons. He's good. You got to get him touches. Yeah, l let me ask you a question, Jason, because you have the most shares of Bijan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read you the ADP of running backs five weeks into the year, and you tell me whether you would rather have these players on your team. Got it. I mean, I know the second round was hot, so give them to me. Uh, Saquon Barkley was drafted five picks after Bijan. Hundred percent, of course. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. Well, with the ankle injury, I'd rather have Bijan, but he's been better. Uh, Jameer Gibbs. Gibbs for sure. What about uh, Kyron? Kyron for sure. Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry for <laughs> sure. Uh, so, oh, and oh, then you man. then you started to get into probably where you. I mean, James Cook. Definitely. Yeah, I think you would take. I think James I would Cook. take James Cook over Kenneth Walker. Over Bijan. Oh man! From what we've seen, yeah, I would take Kenneth Walker. It, it is. It's Bijan is not a bad player. He's a great asset to have, but he's not a. It's the adjustment of expectations. You want 
in fantasy, one of those players who can be worth two players in one spot, a guy who can go out there and put up 30 and like that's the, in, in any position, but you want those guys who can have those big monstrous blow up games. There's no reason in the world why Bijan shouldn't be able to do that, but it doesn't matter if you're able to do it, if you're not doing it. And, and the, the truth is this is an Algier problem. Algier is good. Brees is experiencing experiencing the same thing because Braylon Allen turns out he's good. And so if you're an NFL team and you're in practice and you're going, that guy is really good, let's utilize him, let's use all of our good players, well, then you put your good players on the field and, you, you know, most teams don't have two running backs on the field at the same time. People need to go look at what Detroit's doing and figure it out. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the pass rate for Atlanta is rocketed upwards, too. It was 54% in, from weeks one through three. 71% last week, 78% this week. Good. They're basically um, unless making it's, unless it's first and 10 under 2 minutes to go. <laughs> oh boy. And then and and then you need to run the ball with Tyler Algier. The Falcons did not in any way shape or form deserve to win that game. Uh Bucks, you looked awesome. I'm sorry for your loss. Although I am happy. I always root for the home team on on you know the people that are there. What a game to experience. Well, I mean the the uh the Buccaneers did what they can't do, which is Turn the ball over under two minutes. Bucky Irving with the fumble. Yeah. Um, this was the first time all year that Rashad White outrushed Bucky Irving, believe it or not, despite the fact it's week five. Um, Rashad White was 10 for uh, 72. He had a 56-yard run. Bucky Irving, 9 for 44. I know that there was a lot of disappointment because the, the fantasy output for Bucky Irving, if you tried to flex him with the fumble mixed in. Yeah, the, the fumble kills um, him. If, if you don't have the fumble for who Bucky is, it would have been okay. Do you know Rashad White had three catches for negative six I'm, yards? I'm looking at that right now. A long of negative two. So Evans. <laughs> so he was <laughs> Wait, a long of negative two. That means all three of his catches had to go for negative two. Factually, right? There's no other way to get there unless every single one of his catches wasn't for negative two yards. So Godwin oh, was a little disappointing man. in the landscape of, you know, Baker only threw for 180 yards. He threw three touchdown passes in about a, a whisper. You know, I mean, like, er, that's not an expression. Uh, it's I a, liked it. Not at all. Three touchdowns. Ah, uh, thank you. Because um, it was really fast? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I wanted to say that like a, you know, we'll leave it there. Uh, but Baker Mayfield just kind of didn't do a whole lot beyond the first half. But Evans got two touchdowns, so you're thrilled. He's uh, incredible. Um, I do think we need to like for, like prescription wise for the future. We, we need to really adjust what we think of Rashad White. Rashad White has been a colossal failure this season. It looked all right week one, and since then he's been pretty bad. Seventy-two yards. That's awesome. He had a fifty-six yard breakaway run. We've been waiting for some kind of something good. But the issue is last year. This is a player who was on the reg getting five plus receptions he was yes. just the dump off machine bucky irving and he's always been inefficient as a run, as a running back and so right now you've got a guy who he hasn't he hasn't had 10 fantasy points in a month and again another quality player in the backfield where you go and you go book but what did he Bucky's have last good. night last night 8.1 fantasy points even with a 56 yard run yeah yeah no i mean it's definitely uh and bucky irving's a good player We'll see if the fumble hurts anything, catches. but no, it's it's what Jason said exactly. He summed it up perfectly. Before you had to, he was the best pass catcher at running back last year outside Christian McCaffrey. That's what he was. Mm -hmm. so he was basically the cheap CMC. Right. He's sitting at fifty three percent of the running back attempts, and yeah, it, they, they're running that's a not different get done. offensive. Like the the it's a different offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. So. Chris Godwin's more involved than he was last year, where Rashad White is less involved in the passing game, and that's and that's, that's just, what we're living with. And that's effective, efficient coaching too. You should throw to a slot wide receiver over a running back if you want yards. With Mooney being the target leader, real quick here, like is Mooney moving into the must start category at this point? Because he was right at the flex level, and it seems like he's a favorite. I mean, he's obviously a favorite of Kirk Cousins. If you had a brutal drop, would have had ten catches in the game. If that pass rate continues, then yeah. It, like, if you're seriously throwing the ball over seventy percent of the time, then yes, he's a he'll be a wide receiver too. I, I think it's uh, I think he is a still a a matchup play, someone that in in a good matchup you're going to see him as a must start. Like you have to start Mooney this week. Um, he's been very very good 
And the targets, I mean, 16 targets, that's just... That's not an easy number to hit. No. All right, it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. The winner this week is Bucky Irving. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It looks like it's fumbling uh, fantasy footballs. Okay. See what I did there? Yeah, okay. the uh, the winner from jointhefoot.com. Thank you for supporting the show. Fumbling fantasy footballs is their name. I just assume that's Bucky's yeah. like handle. Yeah. $100 to fantasychamps.com and a t-shirt. Congratulations. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the report we have this morning is that Jonathan Taylor likely misses time with a high ankle sprain. Mild, mild, mild. Thank you, Oof. Mike. Whoa, man. Yeah, don't just say high you, ankle you sprain. You can't be. It's like when you got to remember to say the word allegedly or you get in well, I mean, big the, trouble with yeah, the You want to get sued? Mild was not part of the report. Well, but uh, originally. Maybe they originally. took the mild off. Yeah. Well, he's don't. D don't get us wrong. He's going to miss the same amount of time as yeah. a high ankle sprain. Ian Rappaport, you better you better lawyer up. Yeah, pa mild. Papa Josh and I are facing one another. Um, you got Moon, Josh. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that the Falcons continue to taunt you, right? Because yeah. last week you had to dress up like yeah. a fan of the Falcons, and then this week, what a loser! I Darnell Mooney all over you. Yeah. Yeah, that was Just a big, big, big moony, yeah. big pressed ham Andy, right in your uh, face. Andy, Andy showed him that moon. So listen, but what I was going to say is with this Jonathan Taylor news, Papa Josh has Jonathan Taylor, and he picked up Trey Sermon. Okay. I've got Joe Mixon on my team. I have Cam Akers. Uh -oh. There's a chance it's a Cam Akers, Trey Sermon, <laughs> nasty boy fest <laughs> in our league of record this week. Uh, first one to eight points wins, Papa Josh. Does that uh, work? Yeah, I think. Well, eight, eight points. Six two. points. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor is not not trending to play and terrifying he if he did. He didn't practice Thursday. He has a high ankle sprain. He's not going to play. Anthony Richardson limited. <sighs> this is interesting. Okay. This is really interesting because I think yesterday I, I looked into this more as an Anthony Richardson manager in the league of record. I'm like really trying to figure it out. I think at this point it's a very fair 50-50 split. Uh, Flacco in practice, even though Richardson uh, participated and was back at practice, Flacco was taking the majority of the first team reps. So there, there's a legitimate chance that Flacco is the starter this week. You're going to have to monitor this, and I, I wouldn't. We get a tweet from three minutes ago. Oh, all right. Um, boo -doo -doo, boo -doo -boo. Looks like Colts quarterback Joe Flacco is taking most, if not all, of the first team reps today. Richardson's standing behind Flacco right now and just watching him throw. Okay. That's a good, I mean, a hot tip for Richardson. You probably want to watch Joe Flacco throw. Make also, no sign make of. Make sure you got so you Josh can, Downs on the roster. No sign of Jonathan Mild. High ankle sprain, Taylor. <laughs> okay, good. All right, Evan Ingram remained limited. He could return on Sunday at tight end for the Jags. Austin Eckler returned to a full practice. He's going to be back. And Brian Robinson didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday, but he was spotted at practice. I don't know more than that. Whether, like, I assume binoculars or I mean, oh, I was Joe like Mixon cheetah. was – Oh. <laughs> okay, you got, you got it in quick enough. Joe Mixon <laughs> was spotted last week. I guess that was the bad one. No, that was. was <laughs> that was bad. I if I had a button on my board, all right. I need to get some kind of busted button. What were you saying? Brian Andy? Robinson was spotted at practice, which maybe he's going to play. Mike thought yesterday he was fine. Then he missed another practice. Yeah. Joe Mixon was at practice last week too. So yeah, that's, I need more that's details. Fair. If yeah, if yeah. if the uh in, if. The Falcon is still here in Deucer's Alley, which I think uh, he oh, is. Oh, still here. Yeah. Okay. Maybe he could do some research as to what spotted <laughs> meant. Was he participating? Was he hanging out? Let us know. Deontay Johnson remained limited. He's fine. No Don't worry about it. Deontay says, I'm not practicing anymore. David Njoku did not practice, but it was a planned day off. They were giving him one on, one off, coming back from his injury. Whether he's back, we'll find out. We also got word this morning, Mostert and Odell Beckham Jr., could both play on Sunday for the Dolphins. Is Tua active? No. no. Then it doesn't matter. Okay. And then we also, we've got a bunch of these names coming up in the matchups, but I'll go through them really quickly. Malik Neighbors is not going to play. No. Devin Singletary back at practice on Friday. Just heal up, bro. Um, didn't practice Thursday. Still day-to-day. -day. Take some time, man. Jason Just like, might have picked up Tyrone Tracy. and I have no one else to start. 
Singletary, you're not going to win this game. Just just rest. Joe Mixon did not practice, uh, not expected to play. Week three for Joe Mixon out of the lineup. Romeo Dobbs didn't practice, personal issue. Uh, the Packers will take it day to day on his availability. Yeah, I hate hearing these. George Kittle didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. He seems like he's actually questionable again. There's a rib injury, but I, I still think Kittle will be out there. Yeah, I, I don't have a, a slant on whether he'll be active or or inactive. It won't matter. They're playing the Cardinals at home. So the if he's active, you you play for for sure yeah. for sure. It won't matter. It'll matter. If it you won't have matter Kittle. to the to the Niners. Is my point. But yes, if you have George Kittle, be prepared to have someone else. Uh, Jawan Johnson, I think, is a fine flex or, or a, a flying pivot option off the waivers. Trey McBride returned to a full practice. He'll be back. Khalil Shakir out for the Bills game against Houston. The Bills. If you look Ooh. at their defensive side of the football. Because we rarely mention that in the, you know, when we give you the, the news because you're not starting defensive players. But the defensive side of the football right now for the Bills is unbelievable. They are they will be without, um, obviously, Milano they lost, mm -hmm. linebacker, mm -hmm. superstar. Taylor Rapp is gone. They have uh, two more players questionable. Von Miller is suspended. Ed Oliver is now out. The defensive side of the football going up against Houston, it's just injured enough to make me – want to fool me thrice on cam makers <laughs> oh, yeah no oh, man it, it's it is it is funny because the the bills outside of against the ravens last week they've been a really good defense and i wasn't sure coming into the season that they had the personnel to be a really good defense they had in the off season before all of these injuries and suspensions they had lost so many pieces from their previous defense that i was like i think they're going to be bad and then you see Sean McDermott just do a master class of coaching this defense up, and they looked great. You just can't do it forever. You cannot lose half of your starters and be a, a top defense. So one player we didn't mention um, was Kenneth Walker, which I think he was limited for he, two practices. He was, it was a downgrade to limited. Uh, did you miss that? I missed that. Yeah, I that, was like from, that, was, that. that was from yesterday. Uh, but – Still limited. This wasn't a downgrade to out or anything, but assuming he gets another limited practice in today, I would expect him to go. DK Metcalf was also downgraded to limited. All right. Um, Rashi Rice placed on IR. He's going to get a knee scope. They're going to give more of a determination on how long he's going to be anyone out. anyone tell us what's going on with Rashi Rice? They need the swelling to go down before. That is true. Get yep. the man some ibuprofen. Hey, what is yeah. going on? Get on it. Thanks, Mike. You're very helpful. I'm just like, have they tried it? Probably. Mm, well, <laughs> that was today's Denim. news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break. We'll jump back into the forecast. Yeah, my sources are telling me, Mike, they did hit the Walgreens. They did try the ibuprofen. They couldn't get the swelling Mac down. Maximum strength? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I know that Look into it. it seems like it's like you take two or three. You can go four if you need to, Rushy. <laughs> not a doctor. Not, not, yeah, not a doctor. <laughs> not a doctor. <laughs> it's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm sorry to dive back into this, but if it's maximum strength, I think inherently it should be one pill only. Yeah, and it should be the max you're allowed. To you know take. how big that pill would be. I mean, but why? Why is maximum strength? You're bringing strength, up a really right? good point. Is the is the dosage two? Because that is yes, a, yes, that's half is. the maximum. That is you're one hundred percent maximum. Each pill is a maximum. <laughs> yeah, that's not maximum strength. No, those you pills are not maximum strength. It, Shrinkflation added again, again. <laughs> this <Good>. economy. <laughs> it's freaking ridiculous, man. All right, yesterday we covered the Jets, Vikings, Panthers, Bears. Ravens, Bengals, Dolphins, Patriots, Browns, Commanders, Colts, Jags. So let's start with that game. <laughs> let's start with Buffalo 3-1 and one, taking on the now 3-1 and one Houston Texans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Houston minus one. The over-under is 47.5. Jason, your start of the week with C.J. Stroud. Uh, the defensive uh, situation for the Bills only further endorses that start. You know, 
Josh Allen, what what's your take on the Josh Allen experience without Stephon Diggs through four weeks? He's had he's had two weeks where he looked completely exactly like Josh Allen. Number one and number two, fantasy uh, finished. He's had two weeks under ten fantasy points. He's been uh, red light green light. I'd, I'd, I'd feel, argue he looked great for three games, he, but the, yes. the Miami Dolphins defense were the reason that we didn't get Josh – or the offense, I should say. That's the reason we didn't get Josh Allen good in week two. Yeah, the the, the blowout victory against the uh, Dolphins kind of hurt his fantasy production, but he was good. This last week was bad. I I think it's okay, but obviously he – he uh, Shaquille uh, is out. Shakir. Shakir. Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal. Man. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal is – is basically Keon Coleman in this offense. What but if I told you those two fantasy finishes, the the week two and week four, were the worst fantasy finishes for Josh Allen in any week since week 17 of 2019? Like, wow. he doesn't – he's played bad teams with no offense over the last five years and put up better weeks. So I, I just – I think the – what I'm trying to say is that Josh Allen is a must-start always, every week. Yes. But – the range of outcomes for him might have changed without Diggs and now without Shakir this week. You know, they can win ball games with James Cook. The reason they won 31 to 10 in week two is because they could win the ball game with James Cook. So we should be thrilled about the defensive struggles then for the Bills because I think yes. that for the most part, they want to be in games and have to throw it a lot. And uh, Josh Allen has obviously started. So the quarterbacks are in James Cook. 58 and a half is the rushing line. First dud game of the week last week uh, after I traded for him. Uh, in Dynasty, thanks, thanks, James. Um, but you start him. What are yeah. you? What are you actually doing with the the Buffalo run defense is the worst in football, but the Houston offense without Joe Mixon is a committee. It is. I mean, the game winning touchdown last week was scored by Dara Goomba Wale. Uh, Press Taylor got carries. Cam Akers has been efficient enough. If he was getting a lot of carries, he's not. Well, let me ask you this in, in, a, in a way to answer this question. How do you see this game going? Do you think that the Bills, who just got humiliated in Baltimore, are going to have what championship caliber teams have happened to them and they Leading come back the question. And, and dominate? <laughs> or do you think with all their defensive injuries and – No, they're losing the ball game. They're not winning at Houston. Okay, so – No, if, they're, if, not, they're not winning. If that's the case and you're wondering what's going to happen, if, if Houston is leading and they're up and they win this game, then they will be running the ball a lot. And while it is a committee between how they use Cam Akers and Agumba Wale, when it comes to rushing attempts, which is where Buffalo has been getting crushed, see uh, Derrick Henry last week, that is Cam Akers. Like, here are the last two weeks without Joe Mixon. Here's the rushing uh, attempt percentage of the running back core. Agumba Wale has 5% of the rushing attempts. J.J. Taylor has 18%. British Brooks, a name I've never heard of, has... Yeah, you called him Press. I was like, yeah, sorry. when did they start JJ. calling JJ? JJ. Yeah. Uh, but the thing for JJ Taylor is it was 9% in week three, his first game being active uh, this year, and then that shot up to 29% the next but week. But the That's two weeks... Press Cam Akers, Taylor is the offensive coordinator of the yeah, Jacksonville you know, Jaguars. I mean, that was, Cam Akers is at 55% you knew something I did. of... The carry, so he will be the primary ball carrier out of the backfield if that's what you're trying to target here. Now, the question is, is he good enough to do anything with it, or is he Cam Akers or Scam Akers? Cam Akers is 4.1 a carry this year in Houston. He's not catching passes. The last two weeks have been disappointing, but there was a reason I played him in both of them. You're going to go. You're going you're gonna to do it again, aren't I'm you? I'm going to probably do it again. Yeah. If you had, oh, let's say, if you had. Let me make up, the change, guys. Hold on. If you got Kareem Hunt off the waiver wire, would you play him or Cam Akers? I'd play Cam. I'd play Hunt. Okay, though. what if I told you that just now we learned oh, Damian Pierce right. is back at practice? I'm going to move him back out. <laughs> <laughs> right in and right out. It is, it is Friday. That's the first Pierce practice in a long I time. I can't imagine. So we'll he, see if he's active. I, I can't imagine he plays and, not uh, any any snaps that Cam Akers is not on the field reduces my chance of getting the beautiful five points that's the ceiling for Cam Akers. It's just a scary start. It just is. Yep. He's not in two-minute drills. He's not in on third downs. He wasn't in on the goal line when Agumba Wale got the carry to score. So 
Cam Akers between the 20s sometimes getting a carry is scary. What about Tank Dell, who was limited on Thursday? It, we got, look, Stephon Diggs is averaging over eight targets a game. Diggs, his receiving line's at 54 and a half. It, like, are you going to go right back to Tank Dell? No, I'll play Mooney. <laughs> okay. Nice time machine. Uh, Jay, Mr. Yeah, Mr. I mean, Tank Dell, are you, is he right back in your fine. lineup? He's a, a flex. He's 100% in my lineup. <laughs> Whether he should be in yours, I, I agree with Andy. I think he's a, a flex option in his first week back. He is an okay start. This is, you know, I, I have C.J. Stroud as my start of the week for a reason. I think it's a good matchup for him stylistically. And so all three, wide, obviously, you're never benching. Nico is the number one wide receiver. Oh, my sweet Nico. But Stephon Diggs and, and Tank, I think you can start both of them uh, as a flex option. Like, I would start them both over, let's say, Zay Flowers. Okay. Yeah. Um not over Dontavian Wicks, not over – would you start him over Rashid Shahid? I mean, that's where your debate gets close. I'll probably I, I would probably play Shahid. Him, I would start him over Shahid. I, I'd play Shahid. On the other side, Shakir is out. So, beneficiary in the passing game, is it Dalton Kincaid? Is it – like, which wide receiver would you give a shot to? I'd Keon Coleman. Look, if you, if you stashed him and you've been hanging on, uh, we, we had four targets this past week. Was that the uh, – that was no th two weeks ago was the disciplinary game back up to seventy three percent of snaps, uh, with Shakir out. I think that that Keon Coleman's worth a worth a flyer. Tank Dell or Keon Coleman? Coleman. I'd go. I'd go Coleman. All right. The Raiders are two and two, and they take on the Denver Broncos, who are also two and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Denver minus two and a half at home, over under of thirty five and a half. Play your Denver defense. Because they've been great, they've been they've been outstanding. In fact, they're the only team to slow down Baker Mayfield. They um, they literally look like one of the best defenses in the league. And when you're playing against the Raiders without Devontae Adams, you're at home in Denver with the crowd behind you. That's going to be a, a a great defensive you play. You think they can stop Madison? I think there's a uh, there's a chance there's a chance they can slow him down at least. So wait, no one could stop Alexander Madison. Sometimes you have himself. Yeah. Sometimes you have games where it's um you got a lot of options that in terms of fantasy. This is not one of them. So it's concerning because Denver's Denver's defense is outrageous. I mean they were good last year. They're good this year. Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker, Brock Bowers, um, what are you doing? Because so, the, the implied point total in this game is is brutal. It's 16 points for the Raiders. You know, you saw the Jets. They scored nine points against Denver last week at home. Yeah, I, so Trey Tucker, I think, is a good football player, and his opportunity is going to go north. Um, he had nine targets two weeks ago. That's great, but that was against Carolina. I think playing in Denver against Denver – it's going to be very difficult to get a touchdown here for any of the wide receivers. And if you're not getting a touchdown, then maybe in a full PPR, you can have six receptions and squeak out a non-bust game, but that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm, I'm taking both of those wide receivers, putting them on my bench, and then I'll, I'll start Brock Bowers because he's a tight end that catches balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, good. It's a good process. Thanks. Uh, Jacoby Myers will probably be the one that Sertan rolls over to. I, I maybe does he even shadow in this or does he? Yeah, yeah I mean that. I, if I were going to play one, I'd play Tucker over over Myers. If okay. I, I I agree with that. I think the talent you the would love to be able to play. I would Trey Tucker. I would put game. Trey Tucker in my lineup immediately. Right now, it's Tyrone Tracy in my lineup, and David Singletary's playing. I'm Jason has Jason is has nobody. I have Jason nobody. has nobody. I, my my whole roster five weeks injured reserve. I've and got, then a lack of trading with me. I basically have four injured reserve players and three guys on bye weeks, and Tyrone Tracy is my hero. Cortland Sutton or Wandale Robinson? Because these are Wandale. the fifth and sixth highest targeted players in football. I'd go I, Wandale. I agree. With neighbors out and this game looking like a very low scoring game, I, I would go I would go Wandale. Um the yards per catch. What are what is the difference for between Wandale? those two guys? Oh, it's good. <laughs> Well, Wandale's what, like two yards a catch, something uh, like that? I, I, mean, I guess I'm just trying to think. Sutton's of, not better, much better. He's at 12.8. So Sutton's not, at 12.8? Yeah, he's at 12.8. Right. Um, he, I'm just trying receivers. to think about they're they're both very highly targeted, and I wanted to think about that. So you'd go Wandale? 
Yes, between those two. And Josh Downs or Cortland Sutton? Ooh. If it's Flacco if it's Downs. If it's Flacco, I'd play Downs. Uh, Javante Williams is currently not really good at the game, but the the workhorse role, it returned. Uh, he was at 34%. They don't the, have a choice. Of the work. Yeah, that's that's where I am on this. Until uh, uh, we with get – Max Crosby, probably not going to play again. Uh, that's which – I I if you're in a deeper format, I would add Audric Estime just in case. At this point, like trying to find a running back who could take a job. Yeah. Estime is on that list for me. But Javon They have a now hiring sign up. Like on the stadium. <laughs> they they've got a big banner now in, in this, Denver. Now it was, hiring running backs. Against the Jets, it was it was Javante's best game. He was at four point eight a carry, sixteen attempts, uh, three targets, which that was good for twelve percent of Denver's targets last week. So he is He's like an RB3. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And then uh, anybody else you want to discuss in this game? Please Madison. Not. Madison is going – I mean, it, the note in here, Kyle Kyle was saying touchdown or bust. I completely believe that's going to be the case in this game for oh, Madison. Oh, Samir did not practice. It no. Was, it was a full DNP yesterday. I mean, I think Madison is one of those players that he, – he's in a terrible matchup. Yeah. Against a team where, you know, we saw Brees Hall last week. It wasn't good. And he's Alexander Madison, but he'll have all the work. The best play for Alexander Madison this week would be a Jacoby Myers pass interference in the end zone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For he's only sure. had four targets the last three games total, which is crazy because he had six targets in Week One and looked like the pass catching yeah. guy. They, they don't know what they're doing. At uh, it back. could be bad. They don't know what they're doing as a franchise, man. Yeah. yeah. They're two and two. I didn't want to go that far. They're, they're both. <laughs> both these teams are two and two. It's just a gross game. Yeah. Um, the Cardinals one and three taking on the 49ers two and two San Francisco at home. DK has the line at San Francisco minus seven and a half. The over under is 50, 50 points. San Francisco, their, their implied team total is basically 29 points in games where San Francisco is the favorite. They cover their own implied team total over 70% of the time. Against the Cardinals at home, I expect them to do it. Uh, that that's a that's a that's not a good bet. That's a great bet, and I'm not saying that like on, on a on a betting uh, on the the money line. I'm saying that as in 29 points should be coming for the 49ers, and that means Brock Purdy is a good start. That means Jordan Mason is a pretty much a guarantee for a touchdown. Uh, that means Ayuk should get it done. Samuel Kittle, like everyone here, Juwan Jennings should be. Feed. I would play Juwan Jennings because of the history of Brock Purdy's Niners getting it done when they are heavy favorites. Like they, they, that this is a perfect matchup to just throw all your 49ers in. It's how they're built. The 49ers are built to play with a lead, which I know you're trying to. It sounds strange, but like they really, this is not a like Brock Purdy's not. To me, I don't know if he's really a catch-up quarterback just yet. But in the lead, when he's dominant or when their team is dominating, Brock Purdy's fantastic. It's not like the Cardinals are sitting at 15, 16 points. They have an implied point total over 21. Uh, Kyler, his rushing line's only set at 29 and a half. He's not been running the ball enough. We are not pleased with that reality. It's your superpower, man. The get, coaches get to should it. not be pleased I mean, with it, the, what he I, did last week. I will anyways. say this. On the season, he's been running the ball a lot. Yes. For some reason, the last week, when they were getting blown out at home by the commanders, he had three rushing yards. Prior to that, he was on pace for over 900 rushing yards on the season. So I do expect him to get back to that. I, I think this is a line that he will cover. Um, and, and the question is, are you confidently starting him? Because he's been outside the top 12. In three of his four weeks, the 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 fourth game was the number one quarterback on the week, according to Jason Moore of the Fantasy Footballers on uh, yesterday's show. Yes. Okay. Well, that I trust that guy. If you trust the source, there's only three running backs that have been top ten running backs in three of the four weeks this year: Alvin Kamara, Jordan Mason in this game, and James Conner in this game. James Conner has uh, he's been outstanding for the Cardinals. Uh, are you confident that he's going to be able to get it done in this matchup? This is a tougher matchup. However, it's worth noting Fred Warner, who is, I don't know, maybe the greatest defensive player of all time, it seems so <laughs> far this season, 
Has not practiced at all this week. I think he is pretty much doubtful to play in this game, even though he's an Ironman. I think he's missed one game in six years, so I would not put it out of the realm of possibility that he is active here. But if he's gone, that's very helpful. I mean, you're st you should start James Conner no matter what. Yes, I agree. But I think there is a chance he has a pretty okay game here. Marvin Harrison, of course. You talked about the wideouts on the other side, and we expect Trey McBride back. The big one to monitor here, George Kittle, who hadn't practiced Wednesday or Thursday, and he's on the West Coast, so we don't have the news yet on whether he practiced today. But he's the one to monitor. If he's out, it just means more to go around for Debo, Ayuk, and Jennings. Probably makes Jennings a much safer yeah, start. All right, Green Bay, they're 2-2. Two and two. They take on the 1-3 and three Los Angeles Rams in L.A., the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Green Bay minus three, the over under is forty nine. Oh. I don't I don't Only know. Only forty nine? I don't know what your face is saying right now, <laughs> you Jason. You saw that, he, huh? Yeah, I've, I I gave you a moment. What, what the are face you doing? hasn't calmed down. He's got a little smirkish going no, on. No, it was more of a it was more of a sadness. Is uh, it a resignation? What no, is going on? It's, it's genuinely it's one hundred percent I just remembered. I was like, Oh shoot, I gotta dress up as <laughs> something at the end of the show. <laughs> I just it was you remembering you had was, the wheel of shame. I was remembering I got the wheel of shame at the end of this episode and went, oh crap! <laughs> oh my gosh, just a little like yeah. So dunk. stay tuned. You know, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to be, but it's not going to be fun. Incredible, yeah. Face tease. There you go. All right, Packers Rams. If you watched the film last week, Jordan Love did the film on Jordan Love didn't match the fantasy production on Jordan Love. He had a very bad game. Um, he had three quarters of a bad game. Sure, I mean it, it was not. It was not what you wanted to see as a quarterback from Jordan Love on the field. It was yes. what you wanted to see as a fantasy manager. But I'm just saying, like, it was a struggle. And it was the first game back, and it probably will not be a struggle this week against the Rams, who are just – their defense is very – like, they don't play favorites. They're bad against all positions. If you're a quarterback, they're bad against. What about tight ends? Terrible against them. Running backs? Also bad. How about a wide receiver? Also bad. Okay, so twenty seventh against those three positions. I had a really hard time. My so speaking of the 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 DraftKings lineup, when I was making mine for this week, my biggest problem was I was way too heavy on this game. I wanted everyone. I had Jordan Love and I had Jaden Reed and Dontavian Wicks and Tucker Craft. I'm like, <laughs> and then Kyron on the other side. Like I I love this this matchup this game. I'm very excited for it. I think that this one is one that won't disappoint and will be a back and forth affair between two like quality run franchises that are going to do whatever it takes to score. So like I I don't know who I don't want in this game. I other than DeMarcus Robinson cuz I've had to play him 3 weeks in a row of yeah, death. I mean Yeah, I get it. And um how would you order the Rams wide receivers if you're starting them? I know my order Honestly, now. it's different on scoring. If it's a full PPR, it's Whittington. If it's if it's a half or standard, it's two two. I don't mind that. That makes that makes a lot of sense. The, the, these lines here are interesting to me. Of Jordan Whittington, his receiving lines at forty six and a half. Wicks, Dontavian Wicks, the, the the popular pickup of this week. His is at fifty and a half. Like Whittington's expectation is not far behind Dontavian Wicks. It's a good point. So that's that's pretty wild to me. And the game script, I mean, it's a three-point road favorite Packers team. The Rams have had to come back in all of their matchups. I mean, even their their victory a couple of weeks ago was a huge comeback late in the game. Uh, so, you know, Kyron's obviously in your lineup. He's been amazing. He averages almost 22 opportunities a game. Love is my start of the week. Wicks, start of the week. And Tucker Craft, Jason, start of the week. So we're, we're all in on the Packers performing on offense here. The good part is, is can the, you know, what you said happened. The Rams keep up, so this game is more exciting like last night's Thursday night I, football I love game. that this game is in Los Angeles. Like, that's, that's a big part of this is, you know, being the home team, having to try to keep up. It's a lot easier here than in, than in Lambeau. What's your thoughts on Jacobs and Emmanuel Wilson right now before we move on? I mean, Jacobs just he remains a must-play. I'm in a situation not far off from Jason where he's starting Tracy. I'm starting Emmanuel Wilson. I don't love it. But at least it's 14 and 9 opportunities the past two weeks. All right, we'll take a break. We got three more matchups and then the Wheel of Shame.
The one and three New York Giants head to Seattle to take on the three and one Seattle Seahawks. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Seattle minus six and a half. The over-under is 43 and a half. That gives Seattle 25 points. The Giants just 18 and a half points. Uh, you know, the Giants were up against it anyways, and then you take away their entire offense, which I am speaking of Malik Neighbors. Right, yeah, you said their entire offense. This is um, their lack of an offensive opportunity in this game is the only thing that takes that gives me pause about how big of a game Metcalf and JSN and Lockett can have because if Seattle can win with Ken Walker and Zach Charbonnet and I, I don't know I just wonder if we don't get the game we hope for I, I agree completely I think this one's going to get out of hand quickly this is a Ken Bone Walker uh great game coming that's how I see it um I I can't imagine that he doesn't have a hundred yards and a touchdown. Assuming he plays, he's and if been he was out, in practice. Charbonnet, absolutely Charbonnet in this matchup against the Giants. The Giants don't have like some horrific run defense that's easy to run all over. But because their offense is so bad, they're going to the 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 Seahawks are going to be allowed to run a ton and just keep doing that and win an ugly ball game. So I agree. I'm I'm starting DK Metcalf. I'm not excited about what he's going to do this game. Uh, JSN, Tyler Lockett, those are guys where if you've got a good team, I would prefer to bench them in yeah. this matchup. Yeah. Um, I would love to play them if they were on <laughs> Yeah, waivers. no, we got it. Yeah. We got it. Uh, but no, I, I say DK Metcalf and the normal team. Ken Walker. That's where, that's all I want. I want uh, just quick, if we can, a larger discussion about DK Metcalf. How do you view him? Like I, I feel still like, undervalued. I feel yeah. I, I feel like the perception of Metcalf is still where it was from the draft. I I'm guessing. Look, week one was terrible. They played the Denver Broncos. Surprise! Surprise! We're learning that teams play bad against them. And then the next three weeks, the dude has been 129, 104, 104. He scored in two of the three. Like still do, undervalued. Do 14 we, targets, 12 targets, a yeah, monster yeah, involvement. Do we, do we need to start thinking about DK? differently well you guys do i've been viewing them this way the whole time i, I, bring I think it up. he's a top 10 wide receiver i bring it up because i am like my my opinion is like i gotta i gotta shift this from dk is well he's just no he's, he's a still pretty good play dk metcalf like looking like you know, you know the the hopes and the dreams of of grub coming in from college bringing that offensive system who he like incredible success at washington and it's like is DK going to be Roma Dunze? It looks – it's looking good. It's looking good so far. Okay, so the legitimate question here, we, we talked about the wide receivers and how this game script could could happen. We're obviously not playing anyone other than Wandale in a full PPR on the Giants. and Wandale or Whittington? Wandale. If, if it's full PPR, I think Wandale's going to have like 10 receptions. He might not have a yard off of them, but – yeah, the full PPR. He's just going to get so many passing attempts. If I need a ceiling play just to swing, I'd go Can Whittington. I, I, I will point out, Wondell, um, this is not his first rodeo. Like He's played three years in the NFL, and most of those were without Malik Neighbors. Yeah, and but there, the, there have been lots of opportunities for him to be involved, and they didn't happen. Yeah, well, I mean, we have seen, even over the course of his career, we've seen a handful of those games where there's just hyper-targeted. Again, not efficient, not doing much with it, but the – I think the targets are there. And I just don't view him as a guarantee like others might this week. Okay, that, that's that's fair. I mean, he's Wandale Robinson. I, I was on Slack last week watching the game talking about, like, this is the worst performance I've ever seen. I've never seen someone with more opportunities to break a tackle who his, couldn't. His DK line is higher than JSN, uh, so 50 and a half for Wandale. JSN's at 45. The big question mark for me here, I've been talking up Geno Smith. I love playing him, but we, we talked about how the passing game might not be needed. I have Geno. Like, he's he's my pivot from Anthony Richardson. Looks like he's going to be starting. Are there other quarterbacks that are, you know, would, would, would you be starting um, a Trevor Lawrence or Deshaun Watson or those type of players over Geno because of the fears of game script? Or do you just not. roll with Geno? I'd roll Geno. It, it should be a safe floor for Geno. You just might not have the opportunity for, you know, an explosive game. But he should be good in this game. I'm going to go Kirk Cousins. Oh, nice time machine. Nice Thank job. You. Nice job. Uh, what about Fields? 
Would you go Gino or Fields? I would play Fields. I really like him this week. Well, let's talk about him in this next matchup. All right, we'll get into Sunday Night Football. Dallas is 2-2, two and two, Pittsburgh's 3-1, and one, the DraftKings Sportsbook line. Pittsburgh minus 2.5 at home. The over-under is 44. So we've we've had some, you know, through four weeks, some changes in the outlook for both of these franchises, right? Dallas last year, you know, they won, what, 13 games? Hasn't been smooth sailing. Their defense has been not good. Pittsburgh, 3-1, and one, getting it done. Although we did mention the fact that the defensive numbers might be a slight, they might be slightly fraudulent in terms of how elite they are. You're talking about Pittsburgh. I am. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we just we don't. We you can't say for sure yet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you saw last week when people expected them to shut down Indianapolis, they lost on the road and they gave up 27 points to Joe Flacco and and Richardson, and their previous three games were you know. They're very impressive. So, yeah, it's probably they're probably a top 10 team. But I'm just laying that out there for your expectations for this game. The over under is 44 as well. That's not crazy low. No. We'll 20 that. points from both teams, over 20 points from both teams. So, you know, where where are the big decisions here? We just talked about Justin Fields. Is he a tough decision for anybody this week? He's yeah. it's not tough for me. I have him as a a top 6 play at at the current moment. Look, his his DK rushing line is at 46 and a half. That is like if we can get that on the ground, that is beautiful. Uh, he has hit that in two of four games. It was just if another team could score on them, that's when Justin Fields is it's gonna be great. So and I think that Dallas they're gonna struggle on the defensive side, but their offense will still be able to put up points. That makes sense. The uh there was news this morning that uh Dallas appears to be getting ready to give Delvin Cook a chance to play football. It, it makes sense. In the NFL. Uh, Zeke missed practice here. It, it's hard to not. He was thirsty. It's, it's, he missed practice with, or, with, with, or he was limited with dehydration. I mean. You got to hydrate. That, Electrolytes, Zeke. It, magnesium. That's weird. That's potassium. Weird. Get them you, in your system. Do you guys remember Sodium. the last time we had a limited participant with dehydration? No. No, because it's never happened. Because oh. it's practice. What are you talking about? How, how Where is the training staff with with He's dehydration? He's practicing too hard. He cares too much. Yeah, maybe too, his heart is too big. That's right. It takes so much water. As big as his head. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, I, look, they've got to figure out how to run the ball. They have to. They're not going to be able to be a competitive playoff contending Super Bowl aspirational team if they cannot run the ball to the level that they can't right now. So they're going to give Rico Dowdle probably m almost all the work in this game. It's a terrible matchup to see what you got. Um, and if they're going to bring Dalvin Cook up and then they're going to pivot there, I, it's just a mess. I don't think they get it together. I don't think they figure out how to the run the ball this room? year. Th this whole year, I, I, I'm skeptical that they will have an answer. It feels like they made a – they committed a mortal sin when they chose not to address it in the offseason. Yeah, it, it, either in free agency or in the draft. I mean, and and Jerry Jones was talking about how important it was. and I mean, the, they were going to get Jonathan Their Brooks. offense is still moving it. It's just not productive in the running game. They're number one in red zone plays per game in the it, NFL. Is there any start? I mean, you've, you've got Brandon Cooks out. Would you start Jalen Tolbert I wouldn't, here? I wouldn't do it. I, I, I think it's Ferguson and Lamb absorbing the majority of the targets. I agree. I agree. Ferguson, Lamb, Prescott in. Fields, Najee, Pickens in. Check out. What about Fryermuth? What if you're yeah, in yeah. this economy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's got four receptions each of the first four weeks. I think he's a safe start to not goose. And that is, uh, you know, that's a, a high bar. The Cowboys defense has, has generally been pretty good against tight ends, so it's not one I'm targeting by any – but like I would rather play Juwan Johnson – against Kansas City, who gives up tons of yardage and receptions to the tight end position versus Pat Fryermuth if you're just streaming. New Orleans. We've got a Monday night football game. It's New Orleans, Kansas City. Speaking of Juwan Johnson. You probably, uh, Papa Josh, you've already got red paint. So, like, do you want to make, like, a Kansas City, New Orleans bet here? Um, No. Oh, okay. No. All right. Well, you got the. I mean, here I can give you. Uh, I can give you a bunch of these W's. <laughs> I won't be needing them, baby. <laughs> this 
this uh, oh, thermometer, man. this 10 win thermometer for the Saints behind me might just stay at two for a while. To go back to Jason's narrative of Dennis Allen being the, the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is just so amazing for him and that storyline that they dominated the first two games. <laughs> I know. Because I know. how with the domination of those first two weeks, now how much leeway do you get? Oh, he's got the whole season. <laughs> Like he, I mean, he's gonna he's it's gonna amazing. be fine. He'll, well, it's gonna be get better next. after this one too, because New Orleans two and two, Kansas City four and zero. Oh, DraftKings Sportsbook yep. line: Kansas City minus five and a half. Uh oh. Andy's almost upset of the week. You're, you're thinking I'm gonna need the W's here? I think you're gonna need the W this week, Kansas City. Yeah, they're four and zero, oh. but there's like there's like sexy four and zero, oh, and then there's like. Kansas City. I can't believe you're 4-0. Yeah, I mean, and then there's takeaway R Rashi Rice, and then Kareem Hunt's been limited. There, there's been some talk of his injury being a problem. And Wait, Kareem Hunt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's been – there's been some chatter this week about that. Clyde coming back. <laughs> Carson Steele, P. Ryan. It's going to be a mess in the backfield. His his rushing line's only 37 and a half. So you're going into this game with Kareem Hunt, and you're saying, oh, my gosh, you better catch – you better catch four or five passes to give me a shot or uh, score a touchdown. All right. If Kareem Hunt doesn't play, what do you think of the running back room? And would No, you... I wouldn't pick up Carson Steele and play him. Okay, thank you. That's what you're dealing with mentally because you, <laughs> you... you just dropped Carson Steele and you are in a laundry machine emotionally. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. He, he would be the guy. You don't think I, – I think Clyde could come I, in and – I'd play P. Ryan over Steele if, if he was the guy. That's fine. You can make that decision. It, I just – I I think it won't be Clyde until next week, if if at all. The, 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 I'm not calling for Clyde to take over, but, like, the, everything was that I had read was we're going to give him run with the practice squad. You, like, they got – he needs to get – they've said he's in good shape, but he has to get into football shape, and that will take a little bit of time, at least a few practices. Now, Papa Josh, I mean, I just bet on your team. Are you willing to make this bet? Dude, you're not wrong very often. Um, so you feel confident enough to... Who, who am I betting against? Yeah, what is the... Just, just the world. That's Patrick that... Mahomes. You're betting against Mahomes. I, I'm, with, I'm with Josh. What does he have to gain? Are you going to put... Uh... I'm the almost upset. Okay. I, I Are mean, you going to put Saints? Who do you think is going to win? Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. okay, so you should be the bet. I said but, the Saints are going to win. But I don't care. <laughs> this is another back, one of those. Back to this, I don't care. All right. Well, look, Patrick Mahomes, is he an option for people this week? No. Rashi Rice is a big deal. I, I, I don't think you should be starting Patrick Mahomes. Saints um, are a good defense, too. They are a good defense. Like, you know, if if Mahomes was out there on waivers and I've got Geno, I'd rather play Geno. Why um, are they five and a half point favorites? Because they're the Chiefs. Because yeah. they win every game. They got they're, the refs. I will say they're, this. They're 4-0, they're at home, and they're against the Saints. One thing that is really, really surprising. They have won 17-10, 22-17, 26-25, 27 All one-score games, 20. right? All one-score games. Their games have hit the over just 33% of the time, by the way, um, since the beginning of 2023, and the over-under is only 43. So this could be a drag out. This could be another one-score game. This could yeah. be freaking 21-17 or something like that. Yeah, I agree. 17-14. It's surprising how often, for, for a team that wins all the time, is always favored and is great and is a back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion, it's surprising how often they don't cover their spread, even though they win. So, like, I, I did pick the Saints in this game uh, on the five-and-a-half-point spread. I think it's close. Sounds uh, like an almost upset to you. Yeah. No, I, I, I wasn't surprised by it, which means the Chiefs are going to blow them out. Um, but I, I, well, I agree with you. That's the rule. You. you have to be like. Usually I'm shocked that you're almost upset crap. and then they come through. I, I wasn't surprised here, so <laughs> good luck. Yeah. Mike, do you agree on the Mahomes thing? Are you setting him down or do you think yeah. at home he'll get it done with Worthy and Kelsey? I was going to start reading some names for everybody. Uh. Uh, cause I like right now Mahomes in my rankings is at 12 and I don't even, I don't know if I like that or not. Uh, would you play Sam Darnold against the Jets? Yep. Trevor Lawrence against the Colts. The Jason didn't answer the Darnold one. Yeah, well, we moved on he, to Lawrence. So Jason made a whole big thing of I'm in, I'm in right. on Darnold. Jason, Sam Darnold or Patrick Mahomes? I'll go Darnold. All right. Uh, Dak Prescott against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'd go Dak. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then the grossest one, Voldemort against the Washington Manders. 
for Patrick Mahomes. Say it. Say the name. <laughs> you cannot be named. He, I dare you. I, I dare you. There, look, I there is some, there's the some, some emotional wreckage that will happen should you make that play. Either way, if you make the play and it's right, you're going to feel really bad. If yeah, you make the play and it's wrong, you're going to feel really bad. I'll yeah, you I'll get it right, you're on Voldemort's <laughs> team. I'll lose with Mahomes. You'll lose with Mahomes. I'll lose with my dignity. Yeah. Xavier Worthy. <laughs> Uh, his line is 42 and a half receiving yards. That's pretty okay. good. He okay. still feels like a touchdown or bust situation. I, I, I agree. I, I This is a player to keep your eyes on closely this week. If you're watching this game, it's a it's an island game. Um, watch him before and during the snaps. Like Just keep your eyes on him because it's how they use him. They've basically been using him 40 yards down the field or behind the line of scrimmage for the most part, like you know, shallow. I want to see if they give him anything. That is in that like fifteen yard like area, like a mature route like, tree. Like, yes, exactly. Because not a little he, sapling. I do believe he has that in his repertoire. I saw it in college. So Woo. this is something where I just want to see a couple packages where that he is being used as an alpha wide receiver. If they don't do it at all this game, then you know it's not going to happen. Get this ready season. to see uh, what I called the Sterling Shepard touchdown last night. Get ready for the Juju mm -hmm. touchdown. Oh. But really, get ready for the Justin Watson touchdown. Okay. Yep. That's the that's my touchdown surprise of this game. Justin Watson gets into the end zone. Yeah, and he's he's at least been on the field pretty consistently. Hasn't done anything, but and we're confident about Travis Kelsey on the yeah. other side of the of the football. Alvin Kamara, they've been taking it easy in practice, but his his rushing line is very high. He it's uh and a half. <laughs> yeah, and a half. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, this is so far on the course of the season, both uh, when you adjust for who they've played and without, the Chiefs are the toughest team to run on. Um, you got Chris Jones there really just clogging up the lanes. Uh, thankfully, Kamara feels kind of game script and matchup proof with his receiving ability, so you're going to start him, but I wouldn't expect monstrous performance this week. Olave and Shahid. Yeah, I'm playing them both. The It was nice to see... Shahid, who's the wide receiver 20 on the year, bounce back from the zero reception on five target game to 11 targets, eight catches, 83 yards. He was just as involved, if not more, than Chris Olave last year. I mean, that you you basically gave Chris Olave's line. He was 10 targets, eight receptions, 87 yards. So they're they, they you know, it's a it's a one a one b situation, which is I think sad for most fantasy managers. I know I know myself. I made a bet on Chris Olave being just the clear target leader by a mile um and it's it's not necessarily that case He's i do been good though yeah he has been good he is pretty much doing what he did last year thankfully this year there's not the expectation that he is some top five wide receiver so you don't feel as bad he he is an a an a in our consistency ranking over 60 percent of his games are crossing the benchmark of a solid helped you game he just doesn't really ever have the explosive like 30 point 25 point games it's just not yeah. who who gets that i mean i imagine it's olave but is he going to get that the the blanket number one treatment from the chiefs yeah yeah he, he, he would be the primary target to take so, out yeah. juan johnson's mike's uh titanium underpants start of the week yes however he was still limited in practice yeah it's a forearm are his who ribs needs that are his ribs broken <laughs> no okay. Taysom hill's ribs are broken yeah, yeah. You said that like you yeah. liked it. I just said it like I knew. Oh. I was aware. Austin Eckler will play in week five. Brian Robinson is considered a game time decision. Ugh. So, I mean, that makes Eckler Ugh. flex consideration regardless of oh, yeah. Robinson's status. Tank Dell practicing again. Njoku practicing again. Deontay Johnson not listed on the injury report. And But um, is he practicing? Yeah, right. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if the ground is too soft or whatever happened last week. But guess what? Uh. Tell me. We got to do this. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. All right, Jason is the shame this week. Mike took it home. I, I'm comfortably in second place uh, last week. So we've got uh, your opportunity, Jason, before we reveal our rosters to spin that wheel. Spin it. Wheel of Shame. All right. 
Not nah, even right. I know which one it is. Oh, you don't? All right. No. Well, then you can uh, you can tell the listeners what the wheel's saying. Spin it. All right. We're looking at it. We got, uh, I saw a Viking, a cowboy, a pizza face. Where is he? Oh, okay. We got a Immortan Joe. Immortan? What? What is that word? Watch the movies maybe sometime. Oh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> what? How do I? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's upside saw, down. I, I think, think you're upside down there. Yeah. You never saw Mad Max? Nope. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> this isn't Bane. Uh, no, no, no. That's that's way can too. Can you uh, describe Mike for those that don't know? Yeah, the for character? if you're listening, it is a it's a face mask. <laughs> it's got a bunch of like <laughs> tubes coming out of it. He's fogging the his goggles. glasses My now. My glasses are fogging. This uh, is good. I'm getting a picture here. It oh, looks man. like uh, like this. If you're if you're if you know Arizona, the city of Anthem would love this mask. <laughs> this is a real <laughs> special oh. mask. Oh my goodness! All I right. I feel like I need to talk <laughs> like this. It it is kind of baney, but very it was, baney. It was, <laughs> all right. Well, let's get into our lineups while Jason can still breathe. I'll kick it off at quarterback. I'm, I'm shame free this year. Through the so, first yeah. three matchups, I'm not going away from the guy who's kept me there. I'm playing Kyler Murray. Wow. Ooh. I knew I would be live with it this week because of yeah, the San Francisco what's matchup. His, what's his salary? 6700 Whoa. Okay. Well, I, you paid. I'm, I'm paid, sticking. You you paid $200 more than I did. I'm going. Uh, Jason, I got a little worried when you were talking, but I got Jordan Love uh -huh. against the Rams. Uh-huh. And I had him all week, and I pivoted. We are live at quarterback. Oh, let's go. Because I saved 500 from Andy. <laughs> And I went with the quarterback on the other side of the field, Brock Purdy, sure. 6,200. Oh. All right, oh, so we dang. got three brand new quarterbacks. That's cheap. It is also very rare that we have all of our yeah. quarterbacks live. All right, my running backs, guys. I spent up on Kyron Williams, 7,600 against Green Bay at home. And then at 5,600, the guy we've been talking about all show, I'm playing Austin Eckler this week. Whoa. Regardless of how Brian Robinson turns out, he could be alone. He might not be, but Austin Eckler is back, and I'm playing him at 5,600. I have been very familiar with the slate this week, looking at this a lot, and I have not considered him oh. at all, and I love that. That's a good yeah. price. All right. Okay, my <laughs> running backs, as I scream through this mask, um, I paid up as well, 7,800. I got Whoa. King Henry. Uh. Uh, I'm going to say that he has another 200 rushing yard game. Uh, and then I've got Kenneth Walker at 6,800. So I did put my money into my running backs and non-pass catchers. I got scared. Kenneth Walker was in there over it. Kyron, and I got scared because of the news. I ain't scared. Me and Jason are both riding that sucks. in the bone zone. Go to the zone. bone zone. That sucks because I, I, he was locked all week. I mean, he was from day one. It was Ken Walker until this morning, and I just felt scared with the oblique limited practice. I get it. At 6,800, and then I don't have Brock Purdy. So I went the other way. I went Jordan Mason at 7,400 against like, the Cradnals. I don't like how this is going yeah. so far. I'm That's, in trouble. Those, those are good running backs, Mike. <laughs> My wide receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr., oh, 7,500, yeah, okay. correlating sense. with Murray because that's what I do. 75? That's his price? He's expensive. Dang. He's very expensive. And then Jaden Reed at 6,500. Nice. And Jordan Whittington at 4,600. Okay. All right. Well, I've got Jaden Reed as well. Um, I, I paid up. Every time he speaks, I can't <laughs> not laugh. <laughs> I paid up over, oh, I, you know, it was like him or Wicks. Wicks is 5,000. It's a great deal. But Reed is the guy. So I've got Jordan Reed. Yes. I do have Brandon Ayuk, who okay. this is my biggest fear point of my roster. I lost this week. I'm wearing this mask <laughs> because Brandon Ayuk couldn't get me six points. Um, but I think against the Cardinals, he gets right. He's correlating with Brock Purdy. And I do have Wandale Robinson, full PPR in here. He's only 5,600. I expect him to at least catch a lot of passes for nothing. All right, you think I don't got Jordan Whittington in this lineup? You're a fool. He's in there for me at 4,600. Then I have Bryant Thomas Jr. of the Jacksonville Jaguars, only 5,900. And then I was shocked at the Marv price because for just 200 extra dollars, Nico Collins – Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in my lineup against the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. It well, feels I, like uh, he should be in every lineup. My flex is Brian Thomas. So I do have Brian okay. Thomas All Jr. at right. 5,900. At tight end, I went basement shopping, which four targets each of the last three weeks. I went uh, 
All Junior. Oh, Eric. Yeah. Okay. In Cincinnati. I, I, dude, I, I, he's 2,700. I'm, I'm telling you, Jason, keeps, you keep saying dynasty. I think redraft, people need to be paying attention. Four straight weeks with four targets. He's taking over. And four catches. Okay, okay. Uh, and when then, you said you went all junior, I was waiting to hear who this junior was. I did, yeah. I didn't realize oh, all Oh, because I had done Brian. Name. Oh, I got Brian Thomas. Yeah. I got Marvin Harrison, Jr. Yeah. I got Eric All, Jr. And then I've got the Broncos defense at 2,900 against Las Vegas. The Broncos defense is who I really wanted. They're the 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 probably the best price defense on the slate. I couldn't afford them. I went with the Colts. The Colts on the road against Trevor Lawrence. Uh, that was all I could afford. I have Tucker Craft at 3,500, my start of the week at tight end. And Keon Coleman is my flex at oh, 4,700. Nice. Um, I think he, he's he been getting more and more involved. He's a good player, good chance of a touchdown. I had Jordan Love, so I got to put in a stack, and I went with a super stack. I got Tucker Craft at tight end. And then Dontavian Wicks at 5,000, and that left me uh, scraping the barrel at the defensive position. I'm going with the Panthers against Caleb Williams and hope that he does more stupid stuff. All right, there you go. That was Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the Sportsbook app and use the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. The mask is Jason's. And we're <laughs> shutting things down. Thank you for joining us once again. You look ridiculous, Jason. Sound even better. Goodbye. Enjoy Goodbye. the week. Join Mike, or actually Jason, yeah. on Sunday Live this week. Bring the mask. Goodbye. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball.